All right, welcome back. Haven't done this in a while, and so decided to pick it up. So this one is slightly different from what we do generally in here. is mostly like research oriented and being uh, you know implementing the research papers. But in the past year or more, I've been away from reading technical research papers. So it's this is kind of different, and I've also been you know, exploring the deployment aspects, building full-fledged applications out of models with uh, which employ machine learning and things like that. So I was just uh, trying my hands on building something that something cool, something fun, something that could be could be done over the weekends because I'm really busy with uh, the other stuff um, at this point. So so yeah, I, I built this little application. I think this uh, will be helpful for people. Uh, getting into this field, already in here trying to learn something new, more useful, take their ML skills, uh, make their ML skills more useful basically by learning things like, you know, how do you actually package a model properly and present it as an application, and, which is more useful and more accessible to a lot more people, right? So what this is, I'm calling it Starry Night because every time I've seen an, a neural style transfer example application there's this particular yeah this this image uh, which is a starry night painting right so I, i'm just calling it starry night uh, that's one reason the second is uh, or maybe it was inspired by the name is that uh, i have made this in a dark theme mode and that was because the name was starry night and i thought okay if if the name is starry night it should probably be in dark mode so uh, yeah that's what's going on here what this is is an an application that lets you style image real time in, uh, I think, eight different models, eight different styles, which are the available pre-trained models. So what I did was uh, I didn't train it for a change, train the models here. I just took the models, pre-trained models from this repository. Uh, this is like the credit to this person. I'll have the link in description as well. So I took the model from here. He has some pre-trained models, not all of them, but some of them because I didn't want all of them. Um, and then packaged it with a Django backend and a React Native, uh, sorry, not React Native, but React frontend combined with a lot of uh, React responsive uh, CSS from uh, the library itself, because I'm not really uh, well versed in CSS and I didn't want to bang my head around that because I can never figure that out. Um, and yeah, uh, so this is what we have. I'll, I'll just talk about what I mean, this can be seen as a continuation of what we've already done in this channel by implementing the research paper of the, the original style transfer research paper from scratch. Um, and this is this is a continuation of that work, but I won't go into the research now because I'm just want to. I'm just making this to showcase this this particular project and what should we do next, right? So yeah, it comes with this. It this is the home page. Uh, you can go to real time style transfer. If you're not logged in, it will just show you log in to continue. Of course, the design isn't really good because it it could have been better if there was a margin around this, but yeah, never mind. So you have this login inside. The authentication is taken care of uh, by, so I, I'm using uh, JWT authentication, uh, JWT tokens, uh, which is, uh, I'm using the Django port of that. So you can like sign up here and then it has all the properties of our validators. Uh, the, the generic uh, sign-up form validator. So if I enter an email and a password which is too short and just complain, and then if I change this format to, <coughs> excuse me, if I change this format to be right and then complain about the probably password, yeah. So there, there are things, right? So yeah, I, I have the account already, so I'll just uh, log into my account and showcase this application, right? So when you log in, you are redirected back to the home page. It could have been this page, but yeah, uh, for now I'm just sticking with that. Now if you click on real-time style transfer, you'll be greeted with this particular uh, page which asks you to choose a file and then submit that so we can just show you some styles. Now I'll just choose um, probably a dog image and then submit this and yeah, in less than a second you see this like 13 different images, all of them styled within one second, right? So you have this carousal with the thumbnails of what these images what these models and their corresponding style outputs, right? So this is this is pretty much uh, what's happening. I'll I'll just yeah these are like different levels of these styles. So yeah, I mean I, I don't know if I should walk through the entire project. I'll probably do it in another video or probably this one. I'm not sure. I'm just talking uh, as and I don't know how how it's gonna grow. So yeah. 
we, we can also like style some other images as well. Uh, if I just uh, go back here and choose probably, I don't know, uh, this, this one and style so it looks slightly different. Yeah, there's this. So this is also, you know, uh, not very much different mathematically from, I mean, there are some differences, some subtle changes, but the basic concept is pretty much the same from the original side runs away that we have covered before. So in that you optimize an image, here we are not optimizing an image, we are optimizing a model, saving that, and then using that to optimize another image. So that way it's much faster, but you have a limitation that one model can only output one kind of style. So you increase the speed, but then take away the flexibility of styling any image using any model. That's not possible from, from for this method. There have been other methods that do it, but yeah, there's always some trade-off, and you know how that goes. So. Yeah, this is this is what it is. Uh, now, I mean, if you're just here to watch this demo, uh, <coughs> you should. And this is probably it for you. Uh, but if you you want to know more about like how the backend was built, um, what I learned, and what's next, things like that, you can stick around. I'll talk a little bit about, or probably in depth, about the entire design of this repository, this project, and this application, and. Um, what I learned in the process and things like that. If that interests you, please stick around. Otherwise, yeah, this is this is what this app is all about. Nothing fancy. Uh, it's just a uh, real-time style transfer browser. That's that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, if you're still around, you're probably wondering. Uh, you're probably you know trying to get into this. You're either wondering what uh, backend should I use with my um, machine learning projects, is it, is it Django, is it first day, or should I learn like the JavaScript based stuff, you know, Node and things like that. So, yeah, of course there's no right or wrong answer for that. The stack is always, uh, you know, every stack comes with its own pros and cons. So go ahead and choose whatever you want. I can probably provide a solid reason why I went with this stack. So how does this look? Uh, all right, uh, how does this look? So what I've done is, uh, so this the code is probably available online on, on GitHub, I'll link that below. So I've just divided entire, entire stuff into two sort of uh, parts, which is front end and back end, right? Now in the back end, what I've done is, I have divided it into, the, uh, into three parts, which is, or probably, yeah, three parts, yeah. Um, Accounts, which handles all the login, sign up, all of that using uh, the JWT tokens. So, you know, in views, you can see this, uh, probably in serializers, yeah, you can see there's, I, I have like change password and update user, things like that, but I'm not using that. Now, of course, this is not a tutorial, so I expect you know a little bit about serializers or Django, but if you don't, yeah, I'm just, you know, you can, you can see and, and understand how a typical Django application would look like, right? So this is like, this takes username and password and matches in the database and see if, if they exist. And so it will log in the user and it will it will give you some tokens that you can save in your cookies to, to log in next time. Um, and then just registration serializer and things like that. So this is just uh, one application, one part of application, which is which is accounts. Models is uh, the, the crucial part of this, this server design because what this does is, the server will basically scan for all the models recursively inside folders, right? And it will load all of these models as the application starts up. So if you count, there there should be like 13 models here. And that is why like we have one here, minimum three, five, uh, seven, and then uh, 11, 12, 13, yeah, of course, 13 models. And so it scans all of them in, even inside the folders and loads them up and then uh, and then, you know, it will automatically return all of the styles of the corresponding models with their names as well. So it's designed in a way that it can be updated manually and then it will automatically pick it up. You won't have to make any, do any more changes in the code. So if I delete something, it will automatically show up there. But if I add something, it will automatically show up there. So this is this is the design of the, the backend, right? Now, the style transfer, of course, I've taken the <laughs> excuse me, I've taken the uh, the inference code from the repository that I just mentioned in the beginning, and then here is uh, the I've done a lot of different stuff with it. So first, first I've edited the stylize to completely our use case, and then I have created this API from uh, this this uh, this repository, which makes it easier to call the post method and run inference and do some of the uh, 
some of set some of the nice nice defaults right so this is just a utility function to take an input and then convert it into the way the the, the model expects the input and things like that and then we also have the utils component uh, sorry urls component where we have two urls which is like style and models so the models will basically give you uh, i think i should probably show you this i can uh, let me let me show you uh, all right uh, oops. yep yeah so if i go here and then i'll go to uh i don't know style transfer here so if i go to style transfer and then i go to models this will basically give you a list of all different like dictionary containing the all the models with their sections like their their uh in a one layer above uh, the name of those uh, categories and so yeah uh, this this is basically scanning all of the models available now this will give you give the browser uh, like we can make a request and access all of them and then this you can just uh, use all of them in the uh, style and and you can just basically this this style uh, request will help you just send an image and return all of the these styles and that's that's that all right um right uh, that's that's pretty much it in the back end there's like a ton of things that i have like left out you know uh, so when a, as soon as the app starts we scan all the models here uh, in this function and then we load all of them in in the uh, in in the server so basically the models are already loaded so we don't have to waste time when the image comes in to call torch.load and wait for a model to get loaded in the memory if we just load them all and these are also very small models like like about four megabytes in size so you can load 13 models with negligible amount of uh, memory utilization so it's it's pretty pretty efficient as well um yeah that's that's pretty much it uh in the back end now in the front end i have divided a lot of things in to screens and uh components right so components are things like alert box form containers uh, loaders, which the, the spinner that you see when, when we load an image, and then the navigation bar at the top, and the screens are the the you know the visually uh, interactive elements, which the users users interact with directly. These are based on top of components, right? So home home page is basically we take some styled images, save them in the public uh, resources, and then just display them. And then there's an image upload dot js which uh, probably I, I'm not using it, so it, it was just a helper function. So I, I don't think this will be needed anymore. So I can I can just get rid of this. I think and it should work fine. Then uh, login form is the login form. It will just make a request. If user authenticated, it will just save their tokens in the user token local storage module, and then it will just uh, you know scan from that to see the user is, is logged in or not sign up form the same story there which is the, this is style transfer.js is the crux of uh, this this application this takes the style and the image and it will just get all of the data all of the the styled images display them as the browser that's it in, in the app.js we have used react router to route to different parts of the application on the uh, create different routes and which are used by the nav bar to to uh, basically route to link to them once the user is is done performing some application or also like just want to navigate through the website so this is the design i don't know if i should you know do a detailed implementation walkthrough or, like from scratch like follow along coding video because I don't know if I can I have that patience to like sit through programming all of this again I don't know that and anyway I don't know I don't think if it's even useful because uh, watching every line of code with commentary is I don't think probably probably doesn't work for me that well and the code also is available like on github for anyone to see and learn from it so I don't know if that'd be a good incentive here but yeah if let me know like if, if that'd be interesting. I, I can definitely do that. So I learned a lot of things uh, in 
uh, building this. So first of the things is that I had like no major experience in packaging a machine learning model with a web app. So this was something that I wanted to do and to see how it would look like in in, in this situation. So I, I had built websites before, I had built trained models before, but I have never really combined them in this way. Um, so yeah, so I was faced with the choice of using either Node for the backend or Django. And I went with Django because of basically when I imagine this application, I imagine this, this one thing, that I will load all of the models in the memory in the server itself. And so every time, even from like different part of the application, the request comes, I can just load this and that'd be quick. If I was doing this in Node, I'd have to run a Python server anyway, because then I'd be using TorchServe or TensorFlow Serve and things like that to make requests from model, right? REST APIs. So that is why I use Django. And I think you cannot go wrong with Django because it has support. And if you're going to build a Python server anyway, why not make the entire application out of it? Unless there is a very compelling reason for you to use Node, you should go ahead with that. Uh, and that reason can be manifold, right? Either you you are more comfortable with Node, you love Node better than, better than Django, or your entire stack in your workplace is based on that, so you have to use it. But even if you do, you just keep in mind, at some point, like if you're not converting the model to porting it to JavaScript or, or things like that. You, you only have to run a Python server directly or indirectly. So if you're running that, I, I said, why not just use use the entire thing? And then, yeah, I learned a few things about React, which was kind of nice. Uh, React isn't really that difficult. I mean, of course, uh, it's, it's not simple. I, I'm not a master of React, but the basics are not that difficult, especially considering the jQuery days where it was very complex. Even simple JavaScript code looked very complex. Now it's mostly organized. I have not done anything anything very complex, so I didn't use Redux, so I don't really know. I'm fairly new to Redux. But yeah, React looks really promising. And of course, uh, before you say, I haven't tried Svelte or, or Vue, so probably they are better, but yeah. This is my like first-hand experience with, with this. I'll probably do an, another video on the exact learnings maybe, or, or why I I'd say React, uh, I'd say, I said Django is better for web development as a machine learning engineer, but yeah, I don't know at this point. So this is this is it. Um, yeah, uh, so go ahead and try this if you want. Links in description. Let me know if you would, would like to see the entire walkthrough of this video, probably a few hours, like two or three hours or more because it's front end and back end. But yeah, if you'd like that, I'd definitely be up next time to uh, whenever I make project, I keep on like, recording that simultaneously and then put it all out at once. And yeah, I have some big plans for this channel. I don't know if I, if I should do like these things or continue with paper readings, but I'm, I want to make sure that I do something fun with this because I don't want this to feel like something that I have to do. So that's why I, I was away because I didn't have time and I didn't want to put this on a schedule so that this is something that I have to do. Right, this is this isn't really like that. So, yeah, but I but I'm yeah I'm planning to devote more time. So if you like like this or some of my previous content, make sure to st stick around. Is what I'm saying basically. Uh, there'll there'll be a lot more content coming soon. All right, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, see you in the next one. Uh, I think it'll be something cool.